Hey all of you terrain builders, model makers, RPGers, mini painters, war gamers, dealing with another random making encounter. And today we're going to really blaze through electronics as much as I possibly can. I'm going to try and keep it to under 20 minutes. You can see we've got a lot of electronic components on the bench. And so this video is going to be one of several videos to talk about how to add LED lighting from its most simple basic, from using things that we can just buy off the shelf, to using RGB LEDs powered or controlled by microcontrollers. So let's dive in to some basic electronic components. So full, full sort of early disclaimer, if you are an electronics whiz, if you've done this kind of stuff before, soldering LEDs, this is not for you. This is for someone who has absolutely never ever um, picked up a soldering iron in their life or has little to no knowledge of the basics of electronics. So that's just sort of out of the way. And if you know stuff about electronics, you're probably going to cringe at 90% of what I'm about to say. So, you know, there's that as well. Let's talk about electricity really quickly at a very high level so that we know what the terms are. All of this is about knowing when I say something in subsequent videos what I'm talking about. So you have a little bit of an idea. If we think of, you can tell that I went to art school because this is a really awesome drawing. Kind of looks a little bit like um, a boot, but it's not. Um, this is our model of what electricity is. And we're going to think of it as a water tank. And so in our water tank, it's kind of like a battery, we have a charge. So that's energy that is stored. And in this case, it's water. As it flows, there's a little pipe. That's what this is, not a tow pipe. And the water flows out of the pipe. In this case, in electricity, pipe is our wires. It's our circuits, our connections. Voltage is our first word that we need to know. Voltage is the pressure, the water pressure. So P equals voltage, um, not P, P, P for pressure. P equals our voltage. So the pressure of the water is voltage. The other term we want to know is amperage. You also hear current is another one, but amperage, volts and amps. This common electronic terminology. Amperage is the volume of water. So volt V is confusing for volts, so I'm going to call vol equals amps. So the pressure of the water is our voltage. The volume of the water is our amperage. Now, why does that matter or what's, what does that really mean? Well, pressure helps us do work. So if we don't think about, if we think about it, if we don't have enough water pressure and we have something like our LED in the circuit, and it's not getting enough water pressure, enough electrical pressure to do its work, it's not going to work. It's not going to light up. If we give it too much pressure, we can blow it up. We can give it too much water pressure and blow the, blow the LED. If I have one LED at the right pressure, I also want to make sure that I'm giving it the right volume of water to work. I don't want to flood it with too much water, and I don't want to starve it with not enough. Starving starts to happen when I add multiple things to my circuit because as I create more and more work for my circuit, I want to maintain consistent voltage because I'm going to decide that it is a 5 volt transformer that I'm using. So my voltage is going to generally be my a fixed sort of thing. But as I add more things to it, I'm going to need it to do more work. So I need to put more volume of, of energy or water into my system to make sure that I'm not starving my components or overdriving them in the system. So there's a relationship between voltage and amperage, but think of voltage as the water pressure, amperage as the volume. All right, there you go. Volts and amps in one boot-like drawing. There's a lot of formulas, there's a lot of science and a lot of engineering and a lot of electronics that is, you know, degree level kind of stuff. 
we're going to keep this understandable and use a lot of tools that are available online to help us calculate values for things so that we don't have to think about it too much. The next thing I want to talk a little bit about is polarity. So polarity, we all are very familiar with it specifically in batteries. There's a plus and a minus, and that's polarity. Positive and negative. Negative is also referred to a lot of times as ground. That's our ground. Um, if we wire, if we connect things, we want to make sure they're connected in the correct polarity. Now, an LED like this LED has two leads, a long and a short one. If I connect it correctly, this is a little coin cell, connect it correctly with the correct polarity, it lights up. If I correct, connect it incorrectly, it doesn't. And in some cases, reverse polarity can damage things. So we need to be cautious about or careful with polarity. All right, so polarity. Now, positive minus. Now, what do we want to, one other thing that's sort of tied to that that is super, super relevant to wiring up LEDs, and really in particular, more than one, is this idea of wiring things in series and in parallel. Now, this is currently stacked so that these are connected in series. And so what that means is the positives connected to the negative, to the positive, to the negative, positive, negative. It's a very battery, battery centipede. It's very human centipede in battery form. It's just disturbing. Disturbing reference, but when we pull the power out, these are our wires. This is plus, this is minus or ground. And in the middle, we have something doing work. And in our case, it's gonna be a little LED. When you, in, when you wire batteries or connect batteries in series, what you're doing is you're adding the value of the batteries up to increase the pressure, increase the voltage. So in this case, these are 1.5 volt batteries, so I'm going to get six volts of work. Most electronic devices that you see that have battery compartments of some sort generally are wiring the batteries in series because what they're doing is they're trying to push the amount of pressure up, the voltage up, because 1.5 volt in most cases isn't going to do a lot of work in a device. So you need more water pressure, right? So voltage, they're wired in series. Now, the next way to connect things is to connect them in parallel. To connect them in parallel, what we're doing is we're connecting the positives together and we're connecting the negatives together. Our little thing's doing work. Now that one, this is gonna get a little LED because what, you, what happens is when you connect things in parallel, batteries, not everything, but batteries, you're not adding the batteries up, you're actually building a bigger water tank. So because of the way batteries work, basically I'm now gonna get 1.5 volts, so I'm just getting what I'm getting out of the battery, and what I end up with though is more storage. So in, in, the, in the scheme of connecting batteries, if you wanna build more pressure, you'd wire them series, if you want to build a bigger tank with more charge, you wire in parallel. Now that's not true for all electronics, and it's actually not true. We're not trying to build a bitter, bigger tank or increase, our, um, increase the pressure, our voltage, um, when we're connecting um, LEDs, but we are manipulating voltage with LEDs. And so that's where wiring in series and in parallel matters for our projects. Now, if we were to look at an LED, they have a long and a short lead. And so a simple example of wiring them in series would be to connect the long lead to the short lead, to the long lead, to the short lead, to the long lead, to the short lead. And that would be connecting them in series. To connect them in parallel, I would take the long leads and the long leads and connect them and then the short leads and the short leads and connect them. And that would be considered connecting them in parallel. Okay, so series and parallel. More of that to come when we actually start to design our initial LED circuits. All right, what else have we got? Polarity, series versus parallel, components. Okay, very quickly for our projects, the type of components we're going to use are LEDs 
and resistors. These are the first two things we're gonna use. Now, LEDs, like I said, do care about polarity. They, they work one way. Resistors are these little cylindrical devices. They come in different shapes and sizes, but this is a very, very, very common look. They have a color coding system to help you know how much resistance they have. So what do we mean by resistance? Well, think of these as something that pinches the pipe. It reduces the amount of current flowing through, the amount of, of water volume flowing through. Now, they can also be used to change the pressure. They can be used to change voltage. But in our case, we're really using them to really limit the current flowing to the LEDs. Now, the way that we, they do that, you know, there's just built-in stuff that just goes and it helps sort of slow down the amount of electricity flowing through them. But they do come in sort of a maddening, endless variety of LEDs with all sorts of color coding. And so you'll probably end up buying sort of a small um, starter pack that comes with some selection of them for a few bucks. They're not super expensive. Um, resistors do not have polarity. They don't require being wired in in any particular direction. So these are, are really polarity agnostic. The other thing that we're gonna use down the road might be some capacitors. Now a capacitor is, think of a capacitor and they come in a couple different flavors. There are ceramic capacitors that look like um, little disks. Ceramic capacitors are polarity agnostic. They don't care which way they're connected. They're like our friends, the resistor. Um, but electrolytic capacitors do care and they have big negative signs, big minus signs on their ground leads. These do absolutely need to be wired correctly. If they're put in reverse, um, they won't, they have a tendency to swell, explode, crackle, fail, um, and bad things happen. So we don't want to put them in backwards. Think of a capacitor though as an empty water tank. So you have your big tank, your charge, that could be a power supply or a bunch of batteries. And when you flip that switch, when you turn the, the spigot on, all of that water first flows into the system. Now, if it flows into the system and starts to hit components that are sensitive to energy and especially surges of energy, you can damage them. RGB LEDs like these NeoPixels can be damaged by spikes of energy because they have small little circuits, delicate circuits in them. So what we do to help prevent that and where a lot of times you find capacitors being used is to smooth and provide a reservoir of energy so that it is, um, it is buffered, if you will, and not subject to large variations in, in the flow of electricity. So they hold, they store electricity. That also means that if you're poking around in existing electronic components, anytime you kind of come across capacitors, you should be very, very careful when you're messing with them. And I would generally avoid them unless you know what you're doing because they can store large amounts of energy and they can also dump that energy very, very quickly. So if you touch the leads now, these are small, these are not holding any energy, so I can touch this. Um, they've been discharged, so we're all good. But if you were to touch a fully charged, high capacity um, capacitor, it could dump all of that energy very quickly into your body. Now, the worst, the best case is really um, a really nasty electrical burn. The worst case is it's enough to stop your heart. So. Capacitors can be very nasty. There are some components out there that you should really sort of steer clear of. These are one of them. So our LEDs, we'll get some LEDs. We'll control them with resistors. We'll wire them up. We'll connect them to a power source. And that's really all we'll do from the, at the, at the get-go. So we don't need a ton to get started. As we get more advanced and we want to start to get into sort of the holy grail, the RGB LED microcontroller version, we'll want to build things that are a little bit more complex. Something like this where, you know, here I have my power switch and my power input for my, my transformer my microcontroller, some other components, and we'll get, we'll need a little bit more, but ultimately, if you're really trying to bring that A game to your LED lighting, RGB LEDs are super, super awesome. Okay, 
components. There will be mechanical components that you need. Maybe a battery holder. If you do, if you're working really small, like in a mech or a, a you know some sort of armor, um, a small set piece for a game, you can get coin cell sized that will hold a couple coin cells that you can have um, your LEDs hooked to. They come with switches so they can be controlled. Um, batteries, switches, connectors for the batteries. You might need eventually, we might look at getting things like perf board, but all of that's down the road. You'll need some wire. Um, this is called hookup wire. It's never helped me hook up. Um, I'm kind of thinking I might be using it wrong, um, but hookup wire, this is silicone insulated. It comes also in PVC insulated, to be honest with you. Um, I find that I melt that PVC insulation because I'm kind of a heavy-handed solderer. So silicone coated wire for me has been really, really nice to work with. It doesn't melt. It can withstand a lot of heat. It's very supple. It's very flexible. Um, so a roll of these is good. Um, nice. Uh, having a color allows you to know what your, po your positive, your negative, and then these can be used for other connections when you're trying to keep track of the rat's nest of wires that you're creating. Uh, so a little box of, of, um, of wire. You'll need a soldering iron. My re general recommendation there is look for a very complete entry-level electronic soldering kit or electronics kit. It'll generally contain a soldering iron, a stand, probably some sort of a tip cleaner, could be as simple as a sponge, maybe some flux, like a rosin flux, a spool of lead-free solder. It'll come with things like wire stripper, solder sucker sometimes for desoldering things. That's less, less critical. Um, but things like little bits of heat shrink tubing, some basic things. It might even come with a small multimeter. Multimeter is going to be nice to have for measuring voltage. You don't need some big monster like this. I only use like 10% of what this can do. Um, but a multimeter to measure voltage and to make sure you're getting voltage. Um, it'll come with some things. So look for a basic electronic starter kit. I saw some online just recently. Looked pretty good, pretty complete, well reviewed for around 20 bucks. So if you're going to do anything with electronics, a soldering iron is a must. You don't need a $200 soldering station to make this stuff work. We're not that, we're not that precise at all. That's about it. Um, wire strippers, uh, things that you think of normally, and as you go along, you'll add stuff, wire cutters, you know, but if you're, if you're a crafter, you probably got some diagonal cutters, and you know, if you're careful, you can, with even a pair of cutters, you can carefully strip wire. It's not that hard, you just have to be careful you don't squeeze too hard. All right, so tools, components, so hopefully, with all of this being said, we've got a pretty good idea of what we need to get started. With that in mind, I think we're going to end it there. We're going to jump into the next video and we're going to talk about making some basic connections. And we're going to use a little breadboard to start with, but you don't need one. You can just build these things from the scratch. But a little breadboard to show you how we make some basic connections for single LEDs multiple LEDs, and then we'll talk about some out off the shelf, commercial off the shelf options that you could use um, to wire things with little or no work whatsoever. So we'll do that in the next video. As always, thank you for staying with me. I tried to keep it under 20 minutes. I think I've succeeded. I really do appreciate it when you watch through to the end of the videos. If you found this useful, please hit that like button. Please subscribe to my channel. Comments are always welcome. I appreciate the feedback. I love to hear from you. I try to respond as quickly as possible. Follow me on Instagram, all that good stuff. And you know, happy making. And we'll see you back for the next video that talks about actually making things light up reasonably correctly. Thanks, and we'll see you back soon. Shh.